there's a difference between correlation and causation. Correlation just means that when you're, you could do a study or you could do an experiment and you could see a trend where if one variable changes, then the other variable changes, either the same way or oppositely, but that doesn't mean that there was actually a reason um, for that or that one of those caused the other to happen. So that's just correlation. When you notice a trend, uh, that they vary together, but causation is when something actually causes something else to happen. So that's the easy one to remember because it has the same word. Just because there is a correlation does not mean that there is causation. For example, there is a correlation between the number of people wearing shorts and the temperature outside. But just because more people are wearing shorts, it doesn't cause the temperature to rise. The causation relationship there is actually the opposite. If it's warmer outside, more people wear shorts. That's the causation, not the other way around. So it's very important the way that you word things when it comes to statistics. There's another example there. It says when John wears his lucky hat, he scores at least 120 points in bowling. The green hat doesn't actually, and I don't know where green came from, but that was the example. His lucky hat doesn't actually cause him to bowl better. It's just a correlation uh, that when he's wearing the hat, he scores that many points. It's not actually causation. So, look at that uh, third example that's not numbered as the third example, but it says which of the following is probably the causation? A, the people on the lower floor tend to walk more than those on the upper floor. Males are more likely to walk than females. Uh, C, of the younger person, the younger a person is, causes them to walk more, or D, people who wear yellow are likely to walk more. Which of those is probably causation? C, your age is probably a better indicator of how much you're going to walk versus uh, those other things. There may be a correlation there, but it's not necessarily that because you're male, you walk more than a female. Maybe, but not necessarily. Um, or what color you wear. Things like that. Alright, next thing we need to talk about sampling. There are several different types of sampling that we can use when we're trying to conduct a survey. The reason why we do sampling is because it's almost impossible to survey or experiment on everyone in a population. So we need a way to gather a sample of people, but we've got to make sure that it's unbiased. Some sampling methods can be biased based on how uh, those samples are chosen. So here are some options. Random sampling. That means everybody in the population has an equal chance of being chosen. Everybody in the population has an equal chance of being chosen. On your paper, above random, there's convenience. Convenience is, it's just what's convenient to the surveyor. So standing in front of the cafeteria, well, not everybody has the equal chance of being chosen. Some people pack their lunches. Um, I've taught here for six years and I have never once gone in the cafeteria to eat lunch, to be honest. So that would eliminate me from the probabilities of being chosen. Or if I'm doing a survey of math students at Surrey Central High School, but I only ask this class because it's convenient. I teach you guys. I want to do it. I want the results now. I only ask y'all, what about all the other math classes at other times of day taught by other teachers? They don't have a chance. So convenience typically is biased. Random is unbiased. Now, within random, we've got some different types. One of those is stratified. Okay, a stratified sample means that you first divide the population in categories. For example, males and females at the high school, 19, 11, and 12. Um, by subject, math, science, English, social studies. So what you're doing is you're wanting to equally represent each portion of the population. So if you want guys and girls represented equally, you split them into guys and girls, pick a certain number of guys, pick a certain number of girls. If you want to represent all the class levels equally. You split them up, then you pick a certain number of freshmen, a certain number of sophomores, etc. Okay, so that's stratified. 
splitting them into groups, and then choosing a certain number from each group. Systematic. You um, assign numbers to everybody in the population, and then you choose like every fifth person. Or as people walk through school, you ask every third person that walks into the school. There's a system to it. So that's systematic. It's a little bit different than stratified. Um, so you're not guaranteeing that you have a certain number of males and females. You're just choosing every so often a number of uh, people. Cluster is different from all of them. Uh, cluster means that you are going to randomly assign groups. So say I took this class and I randomly put you in groups one, two, three, and four. And then I spun a spinner and it landed on two. So I take group two and then I pick four people out of group two. That's a cluster sample. Um, so it's kind of the most complicated one, but if you have a large population, it's kind of, uh, you can use cluster sampling for a large population. So for example, if we are trying to select 10 animals from 25 dogs, 15 cats, and 10 rabbits, here's how we would do it for each of those types. Random sampling. We would just randomly choose 10 animals from all 50. So who knows? We could get all 25 dogs. Um, wait, we only want 10. Never mind. We could get 10 dogs, or we could get all 10 rabbits, and we wouldn't have any of the others if we just did a random sample. Stratify, we would use that if we wanted to guarantee that we had dogs, cats, and rabbits uh, uh, represented in our sample. Okay? <clears throat> Systematic. We would number them off, and we would pick every fifth animal. Or cluster, we'd mix them all up, put them in, in this case, they said two groups of 25. Uh, you could do five groups of 10, whatever you want to do. Pick one of those groups and then choose 10 animals from that selected group. So that's how you would do the four different types there. Convenience, I don't know. Call them and see which 10 come to you first. I, you know, I don't really know how to make that a convenient sample. Um, You've got a similar example there about on your paper about flea spray working on animals. You want to choose 50 animals from population 150 dogs and 100 cats. So it's got the examples uh, for each of those on there. Okay, let's look at a few more examples just to make sure we got it. These are not on your paper, these are just on board. We got a Gallup poll that surveyed 1,018 adults by telephone in each of the six regions of the country, 42% of them reported that they smoked cigarettes within the past week. So this is a stratified sample because we had a state group working in six regions. They wanted to make sure that they weren't all northerners, or they weren't all southerners, or they weren't all from California. They wanted to make sure that they equally represented the entire United States. Okay, here's another example of a stratified sample. A principal working in one classroom in each department and chooses two students from each class to participate in school requirements here in the survey. So the principal didn't want to make sure that each department was equally represented. Okay, here is a random one. When Seth by Country School sends out a survey of parents by generating a list of student numbers from Power School. Everybody has an equal chance of being chosen here. All right, so before we go on,